We've seen in the practice passage video some examples of these graph and figure questions. Just want to focus on them a little bit more and give you some tips and strategies to tackle them in this video. Your graph and figure questions will be attached to two passages, one science, one social science. The passages with the figures uh, can vary, both in the order that they're in and which ones, but typically it's been so far in the four tests we've seen, one science and one of the social science or social studies passages. It's unlikely you'll see the figure in the Great Global Conversation passage and probably almost impossible to see it in the fiction passage. I wouldn't rule it out, of course, you never know, but unlikely you'll see it there. In general, as we've discussed, you want to do these questions last, even after the general questions about the passage, because you want to just do everything associated with the passage, specifics and generals, you'll have read through everything, and then you can go ahead with those out of the way and tackle the graph and figure questions. Sometimes these qu questions are related to the passage, other times they're unconnected. So for example, the ones that are related to the passage might look something like this. Data in the graph provide most direct support for which idea in the passage. So here you're going to be looking at the chart, understanding what the graph or chart tells you, how that relates to the points made in the, in the passage, and line them up. Whereas you might see other ones that could be done, frankly, without even reading the passage at all. So for example, this one. Data in the graph indicate the greatest difference between per pound profits from fair trade coffee and those from regular coffee occur during which period. So you could do that without reading any of the passage. Now, when you're doing your graph questions, which as a group you do last, there's a particular order you might want to tackle these. So the ones that are more specific, like these, the ones that are not really connected directly to the passage, I recommend doing them first because they're relatively easy. Whereas the ones connected with the passage, you want to do last. So these are the ones you really should be doing last, last, last in the section. Because number one, you'll be better acquainted with the passage as a whole by the time you do these. Number two, you'll be better acquainted with the FET, the figure, or the graph. Because again, the questions you would have done before that are about that graph. You would understand the graph a little bit better, and you'd be best prepared to tackle these types of questions after you've done all that. So do those at the end. Now, the big challenge with these graph questions is the limits, what I call the limits of knowledge. In other words, how far can you conclude what kind of inferences can you make based on the data as presented in the chart, either related to the passage or not related to the passage. So a lot we're going to talk about here, we're going to actually pick up again in the video on inference questions. But this is the key balance. When they ask you certain questions, more you know, harder questions about the graph, you're going to sometimes have to make an inf inference based on what information is contained in the graph. And again, as we've discussed with inferences, it's going to be one logical step beyond what's in the passage, what's in the graph. You don't want to go really far outside of what the graph can tell you. And that's where the limits of knowledge come up. The graph can tell you certain things, but on other issues, even if the passage has to do with it, the graph itself on other issues may be able to speak to it not at all. So let me show you what I mean by that in two of the questions that we did in the previous passage. It was related to this graph. Okay, which concept is supported by the passage and by information in the graph? So we're not going to worry about the passage. We're just really worried about the uh, graph for this one. Remember what we said when we went over this question. There are certain aspects that are represented in these choices which are not really discussed or pointed to in the graph. In other words, you couldn't look at this and infer from it choice, for example, B, because it was too far beyond the limits of the knowledge that you're given in this problem. So for example, internal waves push denser water above layers of less dense water. This says nothing about, specifically, density of water. All it talked about was different temperatures of water. Now, the passage did say something about um, the colder water was denser and the warmer water was less dense, something like that, but that's what the passage says. We need to make sure that whatever is being talked about there can be supported in this graph, and it can't be. This says nothing about density. This is where the limits of knowledge come up. We can't make any inferences about density. Same thing with A, varying salinity. The, the, the passage said something about salinity, but this figure doesn't, so we cannot go that far. Uh, same thing with uh, C, internal waves push bands of cold water above bands of warm water. The trip here was it looked like this was true when it came to the figure, but when we went to the passage, we actually saw that the causality, the causal arrow was flipped. The movement of the water caused the waves, not the waves causing the movement of the temperature water. 
So the answer was D, internal waves do not rise to break the ocean surface. Not only was this mentioned explicitly in the passage, but we can see based on the graph, okay, this graph doesn't show any of these waveforms breaking through the surface. So we can assume based on what's supported in the figure, even though you know the figure doesn't say anything explicitly about this, we can infer just one step beyond what's in the, in the graph that these waves are not gonna break the surface. So that's why we go with D. Now, how about 52? How does the graph support the author's point that internal waves affect ocean water dynamics? So when we look at these choices, again, the same kinds of things come up. With B, we're talking about density. Again, the graph says nothing about density. That's the limit to our knowledge here about density. The graph says nothing about it. Surface temperature, same issue. The graph says nothing about the temperature of the surface. Nothing at all. We can't make that decision. Now, temperature it does, but that's the temperature of the waves. So we have to be specific about this. Uh, D says nothing about, number one, the flow of normal tides. We don't see anything about tides here. But as we already discussed for the previous question, these waves are not even getting to the surface of the ocean anyway. So that doesn't make any sense. So again, B, C, and D just aren't represented by the figure. And you can't make any logical inferences or conclusions based on the figure that would lead you to one of these choices. Now, what about A? It demonstrates that wave movement forces warmer water down to depths that are typically colder. And again, this makes sense. We're talking about temperature. We can see this warmer water, like the 13 degree level, getting pushed down to the level where the 11 degree water typically is. So A is directly supported by the passage, and it's something that you can also uh, infer or figure out from uh, the passage and from the graph. So the graph is supporting A, passage is supporting A, and we don't have to really reason very far outside of what's actually depicted in the picture. So stick with what's in the picture, just like in the passage, the answer's in the passage. Same thing for the graphs and figures. The answer is in the graph and the figure. You might have to go a little bit beyond what's there with a logical conclusion, but not too far. Don't go far beyond what's actually there.